What's up, Inspired Vision? Plus, anybody I might be catching on YouTube, we are now on day 12 of our 19 day accelerated Algebra 1 course. This is designed to help us prepare for the 2016 STARS test in July. So, today we're covering properties of exponents, adding, subtracting polynomial expressions, and multiplying a polynomial by a monomial term. So, as always, it is time to learn some math. Let's get ready for that star test. Now today's lesson, today's lesson is coming from reporting category 1, TEKS 8.11. We're going to be doing six guided practice questions, eight independent practice questions, and then two star release questions. In order to help us with our special rules today, I have an acronym on the screen. It is NAME. The way that this is going to work is we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So we're going to start at the E and then go to the M and then go to the A and go to the N. So this helps us understand what to do anytime we see a uh, special exponent rule. Alright, so you're asking yourself what in the world does this mean? Well, the E stands for anytime we see an exponent to another exponent and you'll know you'll see this when you see a little parentheses and then an exponent on the outside of the parentheses. So anytime this happens, you're going to do the M, which stands for multiply the exponents together. However, something very important is you still do the exponent for the coefficients. So this rule is only for exponents. The coefficients still follow whatever rule of PEMDAS applies. Now, if we see, um, and, and the way, that, sorry, the way that we know this rule is if we see the parentheses with a little exponent on the outside. So we would multiply these two exponents together and these two exponents together. Now, we will do this problem shortly, but I just wanted to give you a heads up of what that looks like. Now, if we need to multiply or if we have a rule where we're multiplying, then we're going to actually add them together. So this stands for multiplication because it's uh, outside the parentheses, it's the distributive property. So we actually add our exponents together. Now, what if we were just adding or subtracting in the problem? What do we do with our exponents? Well, that's what the N stands for, and that means we do nothing with our exponents. We're just combining our like terms. Okay, hopefully you have this copied down. I'm going to apply this to eight examples. Now, anytime this happens, most likely when I'm dividing or multiplying, if I have a negative exponent, I'm going to do it at my very last step. I'm going to either going to move it to the numerator or to the denominator and then drop the negative sign. I'll, sh I'll explain when this comes up. Okay, so our first example, we have negative 7c squared, parentheses, 5c cubed plus 7c. So we have to ask ourselves, what rule is going on in this first problem? And that would be multiplication. So we would add our two exponents together, the 2 and the 3, and that would become c to the 5th power after we add those together but we still need to multiply our coefficients. So we need to multiply negative seven times five to be 35 c to the fifth power. So that's the first term. The second two, we need to multiply these two together. And since we're multiplying, we add our exponents together and there's an imaginary one with this c because it, whenever it doesn't have an exponent, it would have an exponent of one. So then we have c cubed, but we still need to multiply negative seven times positive seven which is negative 49c cubed. We can't go any further with these two terms because there's no equal sign in the problem and they're not like terms. All right, number two. Number two, you see parentheses, but we're not have to, we don't have to distribute anything in front of this first parentheses. In front of the second parentheses, we see a minus sign, which really means there's a negative one. So if 
we multiply negative 1 times these three terms, it's going to change their signs. It would be negative 7b cubed, then positive b squared, then positive 2. We would bring down these four terms in the first parentheses um, because there was nothing to distribute in front of the first parentheses. Now, when we combine like terms, which is our next step, that means we're doing nothing to our exponents and we're just combining 6 plus negative 7. Well, we know that to be 6 plus negative 7 is really 6 minus 7. So that would be negative 1b cubed. Nothing happens to my exponents when I'm adding and subtracting. Then my b squares, that's negative 5 plus 1. Negative 5 plus 1 becomes negative 4. Keep the same exponent, b squared. Then this negative 9b doesn't have anything it combined with. So we bring it down. And then we can combine our whole number, 6 plus 2, to be 8. All right, third question. We have negative 3m to the fifth power all to the negative third power. Then negative 18m to the negative third power times m to the eighth power. Okay, so... If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, that's the whole reason I gave you this graphic organizer. We're going to work from the bottom going up. So the first thing we have to ask yourself is, do we have an exponent to exponent rule, which is what the E stands for? And we do. So that means we need to multiply our exponents together. So 5 times negative 3 becomes negative 15. Now, the tricky part. Negative 3 to the negative third power, we still have to do. That's a coefficient to the negative 3 power. Now, negative 3 to the negative third power, if you type that in your calculator, it gives you 1 over 27. So that means I need to write this as a fraction and put 27 on the bottom over negative 27. I apologize. So 1 over 27, but this 27 is negative. But we already have things in the bottom. So we have to write all of those all the denominator next to the 27 because we need to multiply those. Now, when these multiply as our next step, because we, have, we want to multiply these together first, we are actually adding these two exponents together. Negative 3 plus 8 becomes positive 5. And we can also multiply the negative 27 and negative 18 together. Those are my two coefficients. And that's four, positive 486. Okay, now I want to go to this side of the problem and I want to do my division, which means I'm really subtracting my exponents. So I'm doing negative 15 minus 5. Negative 15 minus 5 gives me negative 20. Now this is the special rule that I was talking about. We, there's nothing left in this problem except for we want to move the negative 20 exponent to the bottom, to the numerator, or to the denominator, because currently it's in the numerator. But the, the 1 stays up here, so only the variable that has a negative exponent would move down to the bottom. So this is my final answer for this problem. I know, there was a lot of steps in this one. Okay, number four. Number four is a little easier. All we need to worry about is distributing. So when I'm distributing, I'm just adding my exponents together, but only I'm adding the four with the three here, and then I'm adding the four with the one here, and then there's nothing to add with the eight, so I'm gonna have to put d to the fourth with the eight. I'm also gonna need to multiply my coefficients for each term, so negative seven times three is negative 21, then added the 4 and the 3 together. Then negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. And I added the 1 with the 4 because there's an imaginary 1 here, and that's why I have 5. Then negative 7 times negative 8 is positive 56, d to the 4th, because there's nothing else to add, so I have to bring the d to the 4th here. Now, Unless there's like terms here, I'm done. And none of these are like terms, so that's it. So this answer would be this one, A. All right. 
moving on. I think this is my last two examples before you're going to try some on your own. All right, number five, we would not multiply first because we have an exponent to exponent rule first. So we have to do the e first, and that means we're multiplying negative 1 times 3, negative 5 times 3, and 5 to the third power. So 5 to the third power is not 15, it is 125. Negative 1 times 3 gives me the x to the negative third power and y to the negative 15th power. Now we worry about what's in front of the parentheses, which means multiplication. So I'm going to add my exponents together. So only my, my like term exponents. So I'm going to do 4 plus negative 3, 0 plus negative 15, and 2 times 125. 2 times 125 is 250. 4 plus negative 3 is x to the first power and y to the negative 15th power. We only have one more step in this problem. That is to get rid of this negative exponent. To move it, you move only the y down to the denominator. You keep your 250x to the first power in the numerator. And that will match up with c. All they didn't do is put the 1 right there. Okay, so number 6. We want to focus on the exponent to exponent rule first, which means we're multiplying our exponents together. So we're doing 7 times 2 and 8 times 2. Only the exponent on the outside gets multiplied. We still need to do negative 2 to the second power. Negative 2 to the second power is going to give me a positive 4, and then x to the 14th, y to the 16th. Now, staying with the numerator, we still have another term times it. So we're going to add our exponents together when we just multiply these two together. But we still need to do negative 3 times 4 because those are my coefficients. And when we add, we're not going to add to the y to the 16th because I only have an x here and I already have an x here. So we're just going to add our x exponents together. So 10 plus 14 gives me 24. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And we couldn't add anything with the y. So... We, right now we are dividing, which means we're almost finished with this problem. We are now need to subtract our exponents. Again, only my like terms. So we're going to divide our coefficients, negative 12 times 2, divided by 2, then 24 minus 3, and 16 minus negative 4. Now, be tricky about this one. So when I'm dividing a negative number, I'm really subtracting a negative number because of the rule. And when I subtract a negative number, that means addition. So 16 minus negative 4 really becomes 20. Now notice there's no negative exponents here, so I'm finished with this question. All right, now here's how this is going to work. I'm going to show you eight problems on the next three screens. I want you to write it down or take a screenshot and try these questions as much as you can before you see my answers. So here is the first three questions. Here's the next three questions. And the last two questions. Okay, here come the answers. So for number one, I want to distribute I multiply negative 8 times 7 to be negative 56, and I add the 1 and the 5 together to be y to the 6th power. I do the same thing with the second one, and my answer here is b. On number 2, I'm only distributing the negative sign, and I'm bringing down the, all of the first four terms. So all of these signs are going to change to be plus 6b cubed minus 7b plus 8. Combine my like terms. My b cubes become 13b cubed. My b squared uh, stays the same because there's not another b squared. Now my b's will cancel each other out because I have a positive 7 and a minus 7. They cancel each other out. And then my whole numbers become minus 1. So this answer is c. On number 3, 
I start with multiplying my exponents together just with this exponent to exponent and that'll give me 27x um, to the 12th power y to the 9th power. Then I'm going to multiply by the term in front of it. So 2 times 27 is 54 and then I add only the x's together to be 30. x to the 30 y to the 9th power. Now that is currently being divided by 33x to the 6th power y to the 9th power. So now I'm going to subtract here, divide my coefficients. 54 divided by 33 is 8 over 11. 30 minus 6 is x to the 24, and the 9's end up canceling each other out. So the y's go away because 9 minus 9 is 0. So my answer is A. Number four, I would start with the exponent to exponent rule. So two times zero is zero, and two to the zero power is one. So this just turns into one. And then four b to the fifth times one is still four b to the fifth. Number five, distribute the sign, and that becomes minus five d minus four d cubed plus d squared and minus 4d. Add my like terms together and I'm going to have negative 3d to the fourth minus 4d cubed. My d squares cancel each other out and then I have minus 3d. Number six, I would start by multiplying the numerator. Oh no, sorry, I take that back. I have the exponent to exponent rule on the bottom so I'm going to need to start off the exponent to exponent rule. So 2 to the negative 2 power that's a tricky answer. 2 to the negative 2 power is negative 1 fourth. So that means my 4 actually needs to come to the top. Now my exponents still stay in the bottom. So w is negative 3 times negative 2 becomes w to the 6 and z becomes to the 10th. So the trickiest thing here was my coefficient to the negative 2 power. Now now that that 4 is in the numerator, I have to also worry about everything else was, that's in the numerator. And I need to multiply these two together. Now you can do this all at once like I did, or you can do it as your next step. So I have 4 here, but when, when I multiply these together, I have negative 4 times negative 3, which is positive 12. And I add my exponents together. So um, when I did my z's, it's negative 2 plus 2, which cancels the z's, and I still have the w. Now I need to finish multiplying by the 4 that I brought up on the previous step, and that becomes 48w. And I have that currently over w to the 6 and z to the 10th. Finally, last step, I need to divide, so I'm subtracting w to the first power minus 6, and that gives me w to the negative fifth power. Or if you want to think about it, the w just stays on the bottom. Because if you subtract, it's negative. Can't have a negative. It goes back to the bottom. And this answer is b. Very tricky, number six. <laughs> number seven, I'm going to start with my exponent rule. So negative two to the negative two power. And that gives me a um, one-fourth. So the 4, that's, that's an equal sign, not a negative sign, sorry. So negative 2 to negative 2 power is a positive 1 fourth. So we would put the 4 on the bottom. m to the 4th to the negative 2 power is m to the negative 8 power. So that's on the top. And I rewrote the bottom. So I'm going to want to multiply these together first, which means I add my exponents, 3 plus 6. And that gives me m to the ninth. And then I can multiply 4 times 16 to be 64. Now I'm going to do division, which means I subtract negative 8 divided by, or minus 9. And 1 divided by 64 is going to stay 1 over 64. So I'm going to have m to the negative 17th power. Apply my special rule here because I can't have a negative sign as an exponent and that gives me 1 over 64 m to the 17th power. Okay, number 8, I just see a plus sign here. So if I add all of them together, because I don't need either one of these parentheses, I just need to focus on like terms here 
and then my answer will be C. Okay, here are your two star questions, and here's the first one. So here, if you think about your rules, the only thing we have to do here is division because they gave us a fraction. So that just means I need to subtract my exponents. But I still do need to divide 12 divided by 3 as my coefficients. So 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. And then if I subtract my exponents one at a time, my x's are 6 minus 2 to give me x to the fourth power. My y's, I'm dividing a negative number, so that's negative 4 minus negative 6, so that's the same thing as negative 4 plus 6, which is y to the second power. My z's is 2 minus 3, which is z to the negative 1. Now the only thing that's um, not finished about this is the negative exponent, so we're going to move that negative exponent down to the bottom, so my answer is c. All right, last question for today. This is a little weird. It's z to the a power times z to the b power, all divided by z to the c power. So we're not going to feel overwhelmed here. We're going to focus on multiplying first. If these were numbers right here, we would add these two numbers together. So since they're not numbers, we're just going to write it as a plus b. Then we're, we're going to divide by c, but we're going to remember divided by c really means subtract. So if that was a number subtracting another number, we could do that. But since it's not, we're just going to write it as minus c. And that matches up to letter h. Okay, I hope you learned something out of this. Stay tuned to my other days where we cover all of the concepts in order to prepare, prepare us for start. Thank you.